the ISFJ and ISTJ, they have NE as a fourth function. So you think the INTJs and INFJs are funny enough because they have SE as a fourth function, so they're not seeing the sensory chaos. That's what's overwhelming them. The ISFJ, it's the abstract chaos. So they can track the sensory. They can see that. They're organizing that. But they just they can't figure out why, where it's coming from, where it's connecting. Now, if I have all this in order, where's all this chaos coming from? Let me give you an example. So you got Sarah. She's an ISFJ. She's probably a nurse, right? Stereotypes. Uh, she's got two kids, uh, two dogs, uh, a new car, a new house, new job, and owns none of them. Her overdominant SI tells her, if I just over-control everything, everything will be all right. So she controls the kids, controls the dogs, bullies the guy at the car dealership, makes her boss explain everything to her, and thinks if I just SI the hell out of everything, everything should be fine. But what she's not seeing or understanding is that the dogs are onto her bullshit. So they're planning an escape. They're digging under the fence. The kids are onto her. They're figuring out how to hide stuff from her. The boss is onto her. He's figuring out how to fire her. The car guy's onto her. He has, he's going to lose her paperwork. And so all this chaos starts mounting behind the scenes, behind the sensory scenes where she can't see it. So finally, Sarah gets a big damn tidal wave in life, and that is the kids rebel, the dog rebels, the car rebels, the guy rebels, the boss rebels, and there's this big collapse of chaos and pain and hell that rains down on her. And what is so frightening for her is that she's been working her ass off with her SI to prevent all this. Why is she organizing everything? Why is she line itemizing everything? Because she knows she doesn't know what's going on. She's afraid of the chaos. That's what the SI is there to save her from. Now, from the outside, if you're not an IJ or an ISFJ or an ISTJ, it looks like people are doing this shit on purpose. You're like, wait, you're over-controlling everything in your life, line by line, giving everyone around you no choice but to just get around you and trip you up. I thought you wanted that. You're working your ass off to cause these tidal waves in your life. That's what it looks like from the outside. And sadly, when Sarah gets overwhelmed and crushed and chaos and crying, after she's done getting broken down, she goes back to the same mistake we all do. And she goes, oh, you know what? I know what the problem is. You're like, oh, what? I didn't control enough. So how do you get out of this never ending hell? Whether you're an ISFJ, ISTJ, you have someone in your life or you're some variant of this or you have an SI, it doesn't matter. We all have varying degrees of I'm trying to over control something and then chaos hits me or I'm trying to get more freedom because I'm savior NE or SE and now control keeps hitting me. It doesn't really matter because it's all the same thing of I'm over dominant in one area causing this buildup and this crashing tidal wave of the opposite function. It's just the universe has to balance itself. People that master their first and last function, they've all got to go through hell. It's basically the hero's journey. Well, they got to stop being the ordinary townsfolk that's just going back and forth, running into the same walls for 25 years. And they got to go on a journey of new enlightenment and death. And when they come back from the hero's journey, it's this balance of, oh, here's how any and SI work together. Now, for a lot of people like an ESFJ or ESTJ, they have SI and NE in the middle to begin with. And so to them, they have a genetic natural ability to kind of balance those two functions in a 60-40 ratio. But then their two functions on the poles are now imbalanced themselves. So nobody gets out of this for free. Everybody's really good in one thing and then just crazy psycho in another. So it's, the point is, it's pretty easy to balance your two middle functions. Say for the ISFJ, it's pretty easy to balance FE and TI, her reasons, her identity and the tribe. But how does she then manage the SI and the NE? Well, we see the people that do this, they act, it's like a workout. They actually have to put in the time. They have to develop discipline, consciousness, habits. And the hardest part I found is really, it's not the doing of the work as much as like doing your demon is absolute hell. It's robbing it from the first function. Because when you take time and energy away from that first function, you get tired, you get drained, you get frustrated, you feel like you're being less than your potential. So think about Sarah. She's got to organize everything. And if she's not organizing, she's feeling worthless. She's feeling bad. She's feeling like she's causing a problem. So it's not going to come natural for Sarah to stop organizing and start observing the patterns. Oh, so that's why the kids always do that when I walk out of the room. Oh, that's what the dogs are doing when they run behind the tool shed and dig. Oh, they're trying to get out of the fence. Oh, I get it. Observing the external world, gathering in that information, and then seeing through the obvious and figuring out what's going on. And is that hard to do? No. If she spent five minutes asking, where is this coming from? Why is this happening? What's happening next? She can figure it out. Maybe 10 minutes for her because it's a weaker function, but she can still figure it out. The problem is she just doesn't do it. Just doesn't put in the time. With the ISFJs, a lot of times what we found is like, if you can take somebody's first function and use that as triangulation for them to see their demon. Like say, for example, with the ISFJ, you can say, hey, can you create a line, you know, because they love lists. Can you create a line item list of your day every day for a month? And as they can start tracking the sensory, you then get a hold of that and be like, hey, see the problem right here on Thursday? Yeah, I totally do. 
Look what happened over here on Monday. That started setting the blocks in motion to the dominoes that are now going to hit you on Thursday. Oh, oh yeah, I guess they kind of did. And you can help them see their demon functions by using their savior functions.